as we know. I'm the mother. I see Alvino and I see the other children. It was difficult. And Alvino must go to great air and we didn't have money. And the, everything began that year. SOS told me Alvino going to Grabbel. You will never know. I cry. I, I see that there is a new beginning in my child's life. And Alvino loves it. I see in the morning he stand up and he don't want to stay in the home for long. He wants to go out for the, waiting for the taxi and go to school. In, in South Africa, there's so many problems. And I think for Alvino, is school very important to learn, to see in his, in, in his future what he will do and where he will go. Because you didn't have school, you will ne no, go nowhere. SOS Africa is a UK registered charity which provides a holistic education to children from the townships. For us in the UK, education is something that we constantly take for granted. We have a good school system, and we don't have to pay tuition fees for our education. But for children in South Africa, often the, the schools available to them have huge class sizes, really struggling teachers, underfunded schools. We realise that the only way to empower these children is through education. That process would involve providing schooling, providing aftercare support, providing transport, school uniform, essentially everything the child would need. We realised that by providing them with this solid foundation in life, then they, they could go on and, and achieve anything. What SOS Africa does is we partner directly with schools. We're not seeking to replace the education system here, but to work in partnership with schools, with teachers, give them the support they need to help the children in their regions. So as part of our relationship with schools in this country, what we do is we provide an extensive remedial program. We identify with the teachers, the children in the classes that are struggling the most, and then we provide them with all of the services reading, writing, learning support they require to excel in the classroom. We start our teaching at 8 in the morning and we work with six groups a day for 30 minutes each. And in that time we do a brain gym, we work on sight words, we work with the reading programs that we have which we're really excited about. We work with the weakest children from each class. They tend to come to school without the pre-school skills that they need. So that is where we are trying to, to help. And we are currently working with 36 children every single day. Taking the weakest children out of each class, working with them every day, especially with a learning area such as reading, it's obviously a blanket issue which affects all other subjects and learning areas so we know that seeing these same kids every day taking that pressure off the teachers is going to make a big impact. They don't know that they are learning which is part of our success. We trick them by playing and having fun. Um, when they read we put them on the Pilates balls which they also think is just you know a really cool toy but actually they're strengthening their core and working on their posture. And the teachers that we are working with this year are really excited for what we have to offer because they have already seen in the months that we've been open a difference in the children that we are seeing and that motivates us to just keep doing better. To be a part of SOS, it feels like I can make a real change in some children's lives, not all of them, but some of their lives. And I would really love to do that for them. I've seen a lot of changes because they got more confident because they know they have a place to go where they are safe. I think one of the most important services provided by the charity is a safe and friendly environment for our children. There are so many uncertainties in the townships for these children that they have a constant every afternoon. They have a building that they can go to with teachers that really care for them and they know that they have that every day of the week. What SOS Africa has done is taken the aftercare centre concept and evolved it into a holistic programme. That holistic programme provides um, nutritious meals. Nutrition is vital to childhood development. So cooking is one of my passions, so I like to explore and try new things. 
if you have a nice stabilized meal that's healthy and nutritious, it helps develop their brains. So some of the kids didn't eat fish, so when you add it in the pasta they can enjoy it. So you have to um, work around that, especially with vegetables as well. So I added with the green salad in sauce. Instead of using the, the big tomatoes, I use the cocktail tomatoes because it's kind of sweet and they enjoy that more. They are now grade fours, and I've started working with them since they were grade one. So I've kind of walked that out with them. So it's really good to see how they've improved or where they lack so that I can assist them. If you look at the community outside, it can be bad outside there. So for them to be here, it's, it's, a very, it's, it's good for them because I've heard my, um, a lot of them talking that they feel that they are safe here. A lot of our staff who are often from the same areas as our children can work closely with these kids and, and provide them with the, the, kind of, the kind of inspiration and motivation they need. In our area, on Snake Park where I grow, Kids um, go to grade one and then they just vanish from the school. And I see it firsthand because I'm living amongst the people. You see the kids, eight years old, on the streets, just walking around. I can see the negative influence it has on a kid that do not have an education. Because most of the kids come from um, um, environments and areas that I would say underprivileged. So really SOS give them a safe space, a safe haven where you receive love and where you can on your own pace do the best you can do. So that's actually when we start. We do brain drawing, which is a must and they do and love it very much, they do. So um, doing brain drum is preparing the kids to start with the homework. After you do brain drum, you can see they're relaxing and they're more focused. So we, we tried by doing brain gym to let the, the, the two parts of the brain work together in order for you to focus and in cases where you need to relax yourself. Brain gym, reading and timetables is the three things that you must, you must do it in our daily program. And then sometimes when they're preparing for um, tests the next day, we focus on the groups, separate them so that they can prepare for the test and then the others go with other, with other work. For most of the kids, I think it's a really good impact. Most of these kids are not in the position to afford a good school or good education, and most of them have the ability to do very good or go quite far. So I think it's amazing that SOS gave them this opportunity in life. <laughs> The children responded so amazingly to yoga from the very first lesson that her and I were standing under the tree with tears in our eyes, quite emotional because we didn't know that they could be that calm. Well, I've been working with uh, the after school SAS program for exactly a year. Today is our anniversary. I think the children overall have responded really positively to the yoga program. It's been an amazing journey for both them and I. I've seen a huge change in a lot of the children who were quite reluctant in the beginning to do yoga because it is so uh, new and eccentric and maybe quite silly to act like a cow or a cat sometimes, but it's been amazing and I think they are um, most often excited to do yoga. I like to think that the children take what they learn from our yoga lessons and let that filter into the other aspects of life because uh, yoga isn't just a physical practice, it's a whole lot more. Uh, it is a space for them to release, whether it's happiness, whether it's negativity, they're able to express that and what they need to let go of. And and also just creates a safe space for them. She is, through play, giving them certain life skills which are relevant to them and the problems they have, how to calm yourself in a very frightening or scary situation or um, how to, to, to make yourself feel safe again when there isn't someone else around who can do that for you. Some people would suggest that, that good exam results, good qualifications, um, is the most important thing. Um, but what we've quickly learned as a charity is actually the most important thing about education is creating happy children. Since the charity was founded, we've all been on an incredible journey. We've, we've seen our children grow and develop. 
and it's all made possible thanks to not only the hard work of our staff here, but the incredible generosity of our sponsors across the world. It wouldn't be possible without them.